yeah, I uh, enjoy socializing and working with them. And I find I was actually quite surprised that I found they're really sociable. They're very fun to work with also. Through talking to them, I was able to learn more about the insights of a refugee's life. Because I feel that it's a new way for me to approach new people and new meet new people. And I also learned a lot more about how they were forced to leave their nation and the struggles that they were facing back in their country. Coming here, we realised that they're just like us and that we could get along with them really well. Well, at first when we came here, we... of course, we faced some trouble like... The difficult aspects of working with my students would be... language barrier. Sometimes they, it can be very difficult for them to respond and participate and I think it's just because they're shy or they're intimidated but... The only thing that they won't understand is because the vocabulary for them is actually quite bad and some of them will say, oh, I just learned a new word today. In every class, there's always a new word for them. Um, I think it's not intentional but of course they did bring some challenges and difficulties. So every time we give them a slide, it's actually very hard for them to understand. Although it's pretty straightforward, they think the lessons are straightforward, but again, the language barrier is the difficult part, I would say. You see that we have improved a lot in terms of organising, because we are students from Taylor's University and we have no experience in teaching people, but uh, in the end, we pull it through as a team. Well, I definitely will come back to this centre to help them because I realise that I like helping people and I like doing charity because I think that refugees are also human beings. If I can contribute to society and help out the people here, I would actually do it. We should help them in every way we can to help them achieve what they want, also to make this world a better place. Well, I think that one of the most difficult aspects working with them is figuring out what they like and what they're interested in in order to get them to want to enjoy classes. The hardest part was knowing their uh, capabilities in English because Like I said, we came here thinking that they were very different than us. Because we weren't told of their skill sets before we came, so it's very hard to plan the lessons. We need to somehow come up with ways to get them to want to be more engaged with us. And in order to do that, we need to get to know them a lot more. And getting to know them can be quite difficult, especially a lot of them are very shy. But like, once you break them out of their shy zone, they're really fantastic kids to work with. What? is lacking is the parent, love of the parents because they come from Myanmar, you know, they're refugees and they got separated by their parents and parental guidance is one of the important element in child development growing because it really motivates them and guides them to do what they want in the future and it acts as a role model as well. Well, what I like about this centre is the student itself because they really put passion and effort to learn new things. When I ask my students, they actually do read all the books here. Uh, I think it, it shows that you know you don't need to have very expensive materials to be able to get an education. And I love that the centre promotes that things to them and that it actually even bothers to give these students an education. Because it's a centre and then like they have to stay together in a dorm, even though it's very run down, they still love each other completely. They still um, treat each other as family members, even though they're bad past, even though um, they're bad experiences when they were younger. They all have the kids, the refugee kids. No matter uh, what housing area they come from, they still make it to come here every day for class and each week and they're always enthusiastic about it. But even so, they still work together as a family, they still listen to people, they're still well educated, they're still well mannered. Just, I can't say they're perfect but you know, they're at that degree, um, at that level where they're just normal. They're kids, they're just like us. So we shouldn't treat them um, differently at all. What I don't really like is that the capacity of this centre and this space is 
kind of small and I think Kiwani Centre should maybe put up a bigger space for them and a better facilities and even ventilation system for them. And then some of them, what I heard is that some of them, they stop coming to my class because they have problems at home. That makes me really worried because it disrupts the learning for them. And as you may know, because the only reason why they had to go English class in the first place is because their English isn't good. So if they had to stop halfway, it's actually bad for them. And then they stop learning. And then I get really worried what happened to them. Like, if they don't come to class or whether they're okay at home. What I dislike is maybe the planning for this. I think they should have more information about Roof Education Centre because as of now, it's just all about Kiwani's Foundation, which is an international thing from what I know. So I think they should promote Roof Education Centre a lot more for future volunteers to be able to get more information about them beforehand. For my group, for the feature writing group, what we have done personally is we learned to let, have them let go because they came to class during their first week thinking that everything is going to be very textbook, 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 very notebook. And our job was to tell them that no, it's not textbook. It's a lot more than that. What I've done, I feel that uh, it's very fulfilling because I've been able to provide these students an education and a perspective from a university student's teacher's point of view. Um, it's given them a view of what's outside of their centre. We give them opportunity, all of them, to speak out. Second is to present. Third, of, third and foremost is to help them write their essays for their presentation. Technically, what we've done to teach them is more of using the uh, software Audacity to teach them how to edit songs and um, do PSAs or advertisements because maybe in the future if they're interested they can download this software and then they can edit music or and upload it on YouTube and all those stuff if they like to do that. One thing I've learned is that they are very sheltered in a way. They only know a lot of things within their centre and whatever they find out about outside of the centre is through their smartphones. So when I came and talked to them and told them about my lifestyles, um, I learned about things that, cultures that they didn't know even though they lived in Malaysia for many years. But I think being in Kiwanis has like made, made me learn what being humble is like and I think that's very important. What I've learned with them is I've learned that you definitely cannot judge people based on their looks. You cannot judge foreigners based on their looks unless you hear their stories first. And that um, some of them are here, especially the Myanmarese, they are here not because they are just looking for a job, but also because they have no other choice. And I, I've learned to be more sympathetic and to I've, I've definitely been more aware about what's going on in other countries and I would like to make a change in that one step at a time. If we were given one more month, we can help raise more awareness and get more people to participate in this education. Because honestly saying, they actually deserve everything everything that the world can give them because it's refugee kids and people look down on them but still we have to care for them we are humans you know because i think that if you want to help someone you really need to live in their lifestyle in order to understand them but raising funds for uh, the kids to get better quality facilities for them i think that's also very important In the centre, we have students aged 14 to 18. They usually come by boats or bus or taxis illegally uh, or they walk across the border from Thailand into Malaysia and then they have some agents to help them come into, into the towns, whether it's Kuala Lumpur or Johor or Ipoh or Penang. The reason why the centre was started is because the students have nowhere to go after they are refugee schools. They have community schools that cater for children aged 6 to 14. But after 14, they don't have any more schools to go. 
they can only go to work in coffee shops or in the construction sites. So uh, some community leaders approached me and said, uh, Michael, can you help us start a school for those who are after 14 years old up to 18? So I prayed about it and a uh, few of us came together and we presented a proposal to their committee. Their committee was happy uh, and we went ahead with it on 1st July 2011. We have organised it like a high school, so we teach them various subjects like accounts, science, math, English, drama, music, etc. And we try to organise other classes for them as well. Uh, music instruments class, so some of them actually take up instruments like violin, piano, viola and so on. And we also have an uh, urban farm. We don't want our students just to be academic, but we want them to learn some skills. Uh, we send half our, of our students to the refugee schools to teach uh, uh, two days a week. We circulate our newsletter to every friend or every church that we are in contact with and they have been very supportive. Uh, we receive donations from the churches and friends how often, uh, I'm not sure about the regularity, it can come in any time, but usually at the end or beginning of the month. Yes, we have many volunteers. Uh, on our academic panel, we have about 30 instructors, and most of them are locals. They are trained to teach, or they are experts in their fields. Uh, for example, we have uh, an engineer who is able to teach mathematics because uh, they have done mathematics in their field before. It will be used most likely for the teachers, the student teachers that we have. We send about 30 student teachers to 12 schools and we pay them an allowance, a small allowance of about 50 to 100 or 150 and we cover their transport expenses as well. And also, um, their meal allowance. So last year, the allowance that was given to this group of student teachers was about 41,000. So your 50k would be well used up with uh, supporting these student teachers. The reason why the refugee students came here is because they want to be relocated to America, Australia or Canada. So quite unlikely they would want to go back to Myanmar but some of them actually went back to Myanmar because they don't have interviews that would uh, help them to go to a third country. Yeah.